I think for most uh, teachers and probably parents as well, and maybe in my own role here as well, uh, anybody with a position of responsibility, I imagine, has to balance uh, two uh, extremes, well, two approaches to education, right? Two approaches to, to formation. Uh, there has to be a certain amount of consolation, otherwise maybe known as mercy, and there has to be a certain amount of correction, otherwise maybe known as the law, all right? So consolation and correction. You need, you need both, you need both. Uh, I mean, if, if a certain English comedian tells a story of uh, his child being brought to the, to the crash and he's playing there with his little truck and then this other child uh, walks over, sees this young fellow with the truck and just pulls it off him. And then the other parents, the other child's parents go, oh, boys will be boys, won't they? And he goes, well, no, your child clearly stole from mine. So, you know, he doesn't need consolation, he needs correction, you know? So, and it, it, it's, a, it's, it's a thing that God does with us as well, right? That to balance consolation and correction. Consolation and correction. Um, if we focus too much on consolation, so if we focus too much on mercy, then God is merciful, do what you want, okay? If you focus too much on correction, then, you know, God is harsh and, and law conscious. And if you put a foot out of line, if you pray in the wrong way, if your hands are in the wrong position, uh, your prayer is invalid. God isn't happy with you. So both extremes are, 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 are dangerous. So we need a healthy balance of both. You know, I think in teaching, modern teaching, I believe the approach, uh, if you have to correct a child, is uh, two stars and a wish. So your handwriting Okay, uh, you turned your homework in, and there are words on the page. <clears throat> Unfortunately, those words are, are illegible and, and aren't the answer to the question I asked. Uh -huh. So, to two stars and a wish. So, I wish you would do your homework <laughs> and listen to the instructions. So, you have to balance, you know, correction and, and consolation. Correction and consolation. So, in our reading today, See, the readings today are about the law. So the law then, this is, uh, I don't want to say, they, let's phrase it this way. They're entrusted, entrusted to the Jewish people. Not imposed on them, but entrusted to them. Why? If God is a loving father, there are certain things that are out of bounds. Why? Because those things that are out of bounds will hurt you. Those things that are out of bounds will hurt you. And so because God is a loving father, I don't want you going out of bounds because that's where you're going to, your family's going to get hurt. That's where you're, you, you'll, you'll fall into idolatry. That's where uh, you're going to fall into addiction. So just, there's lots you can do within here, but there are limits, right? There are, there are certain things that are out of bounds. So within the playing field, there are lots of legal things that you can do that are great. Outside of that, that's where we find ourselves out of communion with God out of communion. So we break this holy communion. It's called mortal sin, right? So the, the, the Lord needs to have, he needs to give us instructions, kind of clear indications. So the law isn't contrary to love at all, but the law can never fully describe love and the law will never overcome love. The law will never uh, en encompass love. Love is always greater, okay? So the, the, the greatest law is love. And if we're guided by love, the law just becomes completely obvious. It's obvious if you love that you, you, you pay the, the, your employees' wages, that you help the, the widow and the orphan, that you give God the first place. These things are plain obvious if you love. You don't need a law to tell you to do that. But, so, if you, if you read from Deuteronomy here, so we keep in mind now this, uh, these, uh, the aspects of consolation and correction. So if you, if you read these readings then through those lenses, it's, it's, I think it's lovely. I think it's, it's a beautiful way of, of seeing how God speaks to these people. Remember, this is before Jesus, this is the Old Testament. So their understanding of God was one God who's creator and who's powerful. Uh, didn't really understand him as father. God hadn't really revealed himself as father. But there's still a lovely filial relationship almost with him. So Moses said to the people, and now Israel, take notice of the laws and customs which I teach you today and observe them, that you may have life, right? And enter into the land of the Lord that the Lord, of the God of your fathers is giving you. See, 
as the Lord my God has commanded me, I teach you the laws and customs that you are to observe in the land. You are to make your own. Keep them, observe them. And they will demonstrate to the peoples your wisdom and understanding. So we do what God says, it makes us wise. And other people will see that we're different and that there's a different way, a different style of life that we have that actually makes us happier and makes our faith kind of attractive, makes it magnetic. So do what God says and I will be your God. You will be my people, my people Israel, my bride. I mean, this is how God in the Old Testament describes his relationship with his people. You know, as he the father, they the children, or he the bridegroom and they the bride. I have espoused my people, my people Israel. Right, so there's a lovely kind of a, a closeness with God. Absolutely. And at the same time, though, we have to hold on to the, that we can't take that kind of a relationship for granted or because God is our father, we can do what we want or because God has espoused us, again, we can behave in any way that we wish. That's not true either. So it, 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 it's beautifully balanced, right? But take care and be on your guard. Do not forget the things that your eyes have seen, nor let them slip, nor let them slip from your heart all the days of your life. Rather, tell them to your children and to your children's children. So obey the commandments of God. I want to be your God, and you can, you should be my people. But if if you stray out of out of bounds into, into moral sin, then you choose to break that communion. So Jesus, then in in the New Testament, in our, in our gospel today from Matthew. Uh, He's saying like that the law, the law is there to fulfill its purpose and it will fulfill its purpose. And he's not here to abolish it at all. Because maybe, maybe, maybe there were some who thought, wow, with this new approach, you know, this, seeing how Jesus prayed and called God Abba and how he wasn't, he obeyed the law, but he wasn't constantly preaching laws, laws, laws. He was constantly preaching love, forgiveness, turn the other cheek. So he was going beyond the law. That not falling short of it, but just going beyond it. it's not the law is important yes but our faith calls us like our faith calls us to go beyond the law like if you're to say well you know i've obeyed the ten commandments so you know i'm fairly okay you know i haven't killed anyone i've never committed adultery um i can honor my parents they're not really around anymore um haven't stolen a couple of white lies since when do lies of colors but anyway a couple of white lies uh, sure that's kind of more or less it you know, but I keep, I keep hold of the Sabbath day, sure, in my, in my own little way, my own little way. And uh, so, you know, never see the inside of church chapel, don't really pray. Um, I have all sorts of addictions, and none of those, strictly speaking, strictly speaking, fall under the, the Ten Commandments. You can be way off target and not, strictly speaking, disobey the commandments. Obviously, the, 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 the catechism fleshes out the commandments to, to encompass... Uh, a broader spectrum of, of moral behavior, obviously. But strictly speaking, if we just look at the letter of the law, you can be way off communion with God and not actually disobey the commandments. Because, again, the commandment of love goes way beyond the Ten Commandments. You know, do I serve? Do I put the other person before myself? Do I, really? So this is, this is the God that, 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 we, that we hope to know and love and serve. A God who's full of consolation and at the same time a God who thank God will correct us you know it's actually good to be told good effort yeah, that's a bit short of the mark though that's it's actually good for us to know that before we start developing a habit or a way of life or a way of living our faith that's actually wrong okay and it's just, it's very very clear as well uh, from, a, from a priest perspective like a gospel like this is very very blunt Therefore, the man who infringes even one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be considered the least in the kingdom of heaven. <clears throat> so if a priest or a parent, for that matter, a catechist, someone who, who's supposed to pass on the faith, does not do so or comes up with an alternative gospel or an easier gospel or a more popular gospel. For example, you know, the gospel of political correctness. Whatever is politically correct, do that. And that's what I'm, I'm pretty sure God wants. Well, political correctness has changed an awful lot in the last couple of decades, where now it's politically correct to be pro-abortion. That's politically correct. It's now legal, right? But that is not God's law and never will be. So we have to be careful. These things are not synonymous, God's law and political correctness. Absolutely not. Or 
the gospel of, you know, everyone goes to heaven, because it's easier. It's, it's, it's way easier to preach that. Sure, you're all wonderful. You're all saints. We want to get a couple of little pedestals around here now. And when you come into Mass, rather than sitting there, you can stand on them, right? You're all saints, the lot of you. We're all going to heaven. Jesus never said that. In fact, he said the road to perdition, right, is wide and many take it. Jesus' words, not mine. So perdition, like being lost, hell, right? Jesus speaks about it repeatedly. Again, I don't need to invent this stuff. Jesus said it. I just repeat it. But if, if I were to go around and say these things don't exist or these were old-fashioned ideas back from the 1950s, uh, that's factually incorrect and before God, dangerously arrogant for me to change scripture. So I would have to answer to God for that. Absolutely and rightly so. So we can be courageous that the God we're dealing with, he's consoling and corrects us when necessary as well. Why? Because he's a good father. Because he's a good father. And so we ask the Lord today, in this season of Lent, to help us to rediscover his fatherly heart, that we might discover him not just as creator, not just as powerful, but as our own Papa.